We're gonna go down to marketing automation where all our marketing automation tools live and we're gonna click drip campaigns which is right beneath the chat blaster. In your drip campaigns dashboard is gonna be a list of all your drip campaigns. You're gonna see the name of the campaign, whether it's active or it's in its draft status, the first page that it starts with, the audience that it's attached to, the purpose of the drip campaign, and the ability to edit the drip campaign by clicking edit. If you don't have any drip campaign set up yet, we're gonna go ahead and click new drip campaign to create a new drip campaign. And we have a couple familiar settings. One is draft versus active. If you wanna turn this on, you toggle it to active. I'm gonna keep this one in draft mode because I already have one set up. We're gonna name this campaign. So we're gonna call this, let's say something like, if it's for all, your, if it's for all contacts, that'll, then it'll be for all contacts. But let's say I was sending this out to just women or to just men or to just people who are in the market for sofas or sectionals because I have multiple different drip campaigns set up. But for this one, it's gonna be all contacts. So I'll always start off with the name of the audience and I'll do new member, new member drip and I'm gonna mark it as test because we're not gonna actually make this one live. Now you select the audience that you want this drip campaign to be attached to. So I'm gonna open up the audience drop down, and I'm gonna look at the different audiences I have set up. So if I were to send this to all men, I would click that audience, but I want this drip campaign to go to all my contacts. And anybody gets into my mobile monkey database, I want them to be in this drip funnel. This is sort of generic content. It works for everybody, um, and that's how I wanna set it up. As we continue to build out the audience and, have, and as we continue to build out the size of our database, I'm gonna create a drip campaign that's specific to people who said that they're in the market for sofas. Because then when it comes to that third or fourth message of the drip where we send out the sectional, I would rather send them out a drip message that promotes our best-selling sofas. So I'm gonna choose all contacts. It shows me that I have 1,553 people in this all contacts list, great and you need to select a purpose. Once again, you're gonna always choose non-promotional subscription. That's the option you're gonna use most of the time. Facebook has a number of different compliance rules, which is why you have a dropdown of different um, purposes that you could attach to this blast. In most cases, you're just gonna click non-promotional subscription. If it is for a webinar, event attendee reminder. Um, if, you're just op if, it's, if the whole drip is just blog post, you could say community alert. Um, and if you're if the drip campaign messages are really just promoting sales, then you would click promotional update. So I'm gonna select a non-promotional subscription. And now down here in my timeline is where I actually configure the drip. So we're gonna add our first message, right? And I'm gonna edit the first message. I'm gonna say wait 30 minutes, then send our, scroll down to find the page, free shipping on, on all orders and click okay. Waiting for 30 minutes means waiting for 30 minutes after that user gets onto the audience up here. So if a user becomes an, an audience under all contacts, we're gonna wait 30 minutes from when that event happened, and then we're gonna send out the first drip message. So remember about what I told you, that drip campaigns will override current bot flows a contact may be in. So if we're doing a click to messenger campaign, and we're sending people into a complex workflow, which may take some time, if they're in the middle of responding or interacting in that bot flow, and you send them out a drip campaign for this free shipping promotion, it will cut off and override the current bot flow that they're in. And unless you send them back to that page through this bot flow or another bot flow that they're in, they won't get the message. So make sure you give them enough time to interact with whatever bot flow that contact is, is in. Then we're just gonna simply add a message. <clears throat> then we're gonna wait, um, we'll send a message 10 minutes after, so then we'll then wait for 10 minutes and then send our next one, which is, let's find it here, okay, price match guarantee. In fact, I'm gonna wait another 20 minutes, okay. I'm gonna add a message, then wait for, I could just type in 40 minutes, then send special sale, okay then wait one hour, then send Amanda sectional. Okay, and then because I'm cognizant of my 24 plus one rule, I'm gonna add my last message and I'm going to send them to the last message of this drip funnel, which is the choose any, choose the rug, choose the right rug for any room, and I'm gonna have them, I'm gonna wait one day. Okay, now your drip campaigns could have 50 messages. You don't wanna blow up a person's inbox every five minutes. Okay, you wanna have a system where you're, you wanna have a system where you're sending out messages 
with interval, spaced intervals enough where you're not overwhelming or stressing out or frustrating your user. So it's usually okay to send out a few of these um, relatively innocuous promotional messages through drip campaigns and then space them out a day, two days, a week apart, just to make sure you're always engaging with that customer, similar to how you've always done it with email campaigns. So this is how you build out a drip campaign. Once we click, once we're finished and we're happy with how we have it set up, we're gonna click save. Once we're happy with how we have it set up, we're gonna go ahead and click save. And it will show me that I'm in draft mode, it's not active. Um, I could go in and edit it and make it active if I wanted to. Um, I don't wanna do that right now. I could also delete a draft drip. I cannot delete an active drip. One other thing to remember is that you cannot have multiple drips running to the same audience. If you try to have multiple drips running to the same audience, MobileMonkey will not let you save that drip. So you could have one drip running for your all contacts, and you could have another drip running for people who are in the market for sofas or people who express interest in a certain product or different demographics. That doesn't mean that, you, that, that two people can't be enrolled in the same audience. You could have one contact who's in the market for sofas obviously is, is part of that audience and they're also part of the all contacts audience and you could have both drips running. The drip that that person is in first is the one that they will stay in. So if I have an all contacts drip campaign running and one contact is in that drip funnel and let's say he's queued to get the fifth or sixth message and then I create a new drip for people who are in the market for sofas and that one contact is also in that audience, he will stay in the drip funnel that he is already in. That's how drip campaigns work in Mobile Monkey. So there's not much you can do in Mobile Monkey to actually edit active drip campaigns once they have been activated. For example, if I go into this active drip campaign and I click edit, basically the only thing I could do is end the campaign and stop the drip messages from sending out. I cannot go in and edit individual messages that are part of a drip funnel. I also can't delete individual messages that are part of the drip funnel. I could only do that if the drip campaign is in draft mode. If you wanna end the campaign, you could end it and then rebuild it out with different settings or different messages if you wanted to modify how this drip was working. So that's drip campaigns in MobileMonkey. Just to recap, extremely powerful. You're doing yourself a huge disservice. If you're just running, if you're just running message, I would even say do not launch your messenger ad campaigns. Do not launch your Facebook guards if you don't have a drip campaign set up. Take the time, take the work, build out these drip campaigns. You will be so happy that you did because it is just exponentially increasing your reach and your engagement for free. It's a huge mistake. I mean, imagine you were doing email marketing campaigns and you got somebody's email after downloading a case study and you didn't send them any follow-up emails. That's like the same thing. Have your drip campaign set up. It's free extra marketing and it's so powerful, it's so effective and it keeps people in touch with your brand. It keeps people aware of what you're selling, how you're selling it, what makes your products and services unique. Remember all the best practices of, of psychological principles of persuasion, of the fact that we're not trying to aggressively sell in our drip campaigns. Just be useful to the visitor. Remember my example of sending customers to our competitors' websites just for the sake of being authentic and being natural and trying to convey that I am a partner with you in your shopping funnel. I'm interested in you getting the right deal and I'm confident that we offer that. So be authentic, be genuine, be helpful, and you're gonna have extremely powerful drip campaigns.